Hello everybody, Toast Bomb here today with another Wacky Wednesday challenge. This week we are using our fists and using our sticks. So all we're doing is beating down people, smacking them in the face, and then embarrassing them with our plasma grenades. Now technically the guy in the comments who suggested this for last week, technically he said that um, I could use a magnum if I really needed it, but I tended to just stray away from the magnum altogether because the wording was such that it wasn't definite so if I felt like using the magnum if I really needed I could use it I did end up using it once in this gameplay and I kind of regret it because it kind of feels like I was cheating in that situation but yeah so then let's get down to the loadout because in this one we actually had a specific one, specific specific things that we needed to have. So the primary could be anything because I wasn't going to use it anyway, so I just have the storm rifle, whatever. That's just what the class had already when I was using it. And then we got the magnum, which I used once. And then also we have plasma grenades, obviously, because we're using plasma grenades. And then we have stealth. Now stealth makes it so that your footsteps are a little bit quieter. So when I'm sprinting behind those guys, they won't hopefully hear me and turn around or get some sort of sixth sense intuition and turn around and smack me in the face, which, trust me, happened a lot. Jeez. And then it also protects me a little bit from stuff like Promethean Vision, so it's harder for me to actually be seen. So that part was a little bit helpful as well in some situations. And then we have the thruster pack, so I can juke out some guys with a thruster pack, go around a corner, smack them in the back, give them the business, you know what's up. And then also to go along with the thruster pack, we have armor ability efficiency, so I can use that thruster pack much more often. And thank you for putting that in. Thank you for putting thruster pack efficiency, because that saved my butt quite a few times. If I did not have that, I would have died a lot more during this challenge. Now during this challenge, Oh my god, man, this this challenge, dude, this friggin' challenge, it made me feel like s such a big noob, man, because assassinating people in this game is hard, and not only because kind of the poor hit detection on the assassinations that are maybe a little iffy, I've at least personally felt since Halo 3, when they switched to the Reach engine, it hasn't been quite as good as it used to be, but regardless, the sprint actually makes it so much harder. You might think it makes it easier, but if you've ever tried this challenge, you'll know where I'm coming from. Because when you sprint, you have way less mobility. So if you're running towards a guy and he moves to the left, hey, you can't really move to the left because you're in a sprint. You're pretty much stuck in this straight line. And when you stop sprinting, there's even a slight recovery period. So if you're sprinting towards somebody and they randomly feel like jumping, you're going to go right under those guys and then they can boop smack you in the back and you look like the biggest noob in the entire world and it happens a couple times in this game and trust me it, it happened a lot over the course of trying to get a game now let's get to the game types because I actually switched around a lot on the game types during this challenge because I wasn't sure what would be best if radar would be best or if no radar would be best because in this challenge each one has its benefits uh, to it one, with radar, you're kind of losing the benefit that you get with not making much sound with the stealth because they're just going to see you on the radar anyway, so they're probably going to turn around. It's, it's more likely they'll see you on the radar than they will even hear you, so that's kind of losing that benefit there. But also the benefit with radar is that you can end up baiting people, so they see you on the radar, you can go around a corner, you can jump, you can thruster pack, you can ninja, you can do all that fun stuff. But then, with no radar, then people have no idea where you are, and you have the stealth advantage with that perk as well. And it turned out that that ended up actually being the best thing. I wasn't sure at first, so I tried Infinity Slayer, I tried Multi-Team, I tried Big Team Battle, I tried a bunch of different playlists, and those weren't really working out, and then I tried Dominion, specifically the Lockout uh, game type for Dominion because that doesn't have any radar and there's also one objective and that was also a key thing. Having one objective on that game type helps so much because you know where everyone's going to be going to. They're going to be running towards this one spot in the middle of the map so you can easily get around behind their spawn and jab them in the back. That was, that was pretty much my strategy throughout this whole thing was I didn't want to overextend 
past where their establishment was. I just wanted to get around behind him and spawn, see a guy, jab him in the back. Maybe get one more guy, jab him in the back, and run away and try and find where they spawned next and repeat the process over and over again. And that ended up working better on some maps and better on other maps. Surprisingly enough, Longbow actually ended up being the map that worked the best. And after using these strategies and finding out really what ended up working while doing this challenge, it makes sense in retrospect that it actually ended up being the best map because I originally thought Exile was going to be the map that would be the easiest. But again, Longbow pretty much the best because it's very easy to tell where the enemies are coming from. Not only is there just one objective, but there's only like two ways or two main ways that people choose to rush the objective. It's from the one ramp to the left of the base and then the one ramp to the right side of the base. So you can really easily run around them and do that jabbing and then go to the other side because they'll probably end up spawning on the other side because you've kind of gotten into their spawn a little bit or at least on that side so they'll get influenced to the other side and they'll just keep flip-flopping and also that teleporter the teleporter that brings you to one side of the map to the other is also a really great thing that I took advantage of a lot I don't know if I did it as much in this gameplay but I throughout trying this challenge I definitely use that teleporter a lot because instantly you're right behind them where they where their spawn is and then you can get a few guys and run away also longbow isn't very wide open in that base area there's a lot of blind corners that especially in this game type people neglect to check all the time specifically the one i'm thinking of is when you're coming up one of the side ramps you have the lift that's over to the side and if someone's hiding behind the box that's near the lift or behind the lift almost no one checks it because the entire battle like 95 percent of the battle is inside of the base that the people are trying to capture or trying to defend so that is where their focus is going to they're focusing right on that tunnel vision and you can walk right beside them and smack them in the back easy so that is why longbow ended up being so good the thing with exile was that while you do have that little tunnel that a lot of people seem to forget that goes down the the middle area of the map, the lower middle area that cuts through. While that is really great for getting behind people's spawns, the map's really open, so even if you're on their part of the spawn, those people will tend to still be spawning in that same area, so you'll get shot at from a long distance, and since I don't have a weapon, I can't really do much. And also it's open enough that even if they are in a pretty far, you know, separate section of the map they'll still end up noticing me and end up shooting me so that ended up being a lot of the deaths for me in exile was some random dude either spawning behind me when i didn't think he would or some other random dude being pretty far away but still noticing me and then vortex oh gosh vortex was terrible the first game i actually played on vortex i did pretty good for like the first two minutes i was getting some kills doing my jabbing thing it worked out but but after that luck dried up after the well of luck was absolutely you know a drought it was terrible uh it didn't end up working out at all because the map is so big that even the center area to run around to the other side takes so long that by the time those enemies have spawned there and you start moving towards it they're already either way too established in that position that they're trying to charge or they're way too far into the base that it's way too dangerous to go in there that you really have no options so by the time you get there you gotta pack up camp and leave and go to the other side of the map and by the time you get there the same things already happened so it didn't end up working out at all but those are the three maps that actually have the lockdown game type there was no meltdown because that that map doesn't have a center base but yeah, if Vortex was just terrible, didn't work at all. Longbow was definitely the, the winner here for this challenge. But anyways, that'll be it for this Wacky Wednesday. If you guys have any ideas for future Wacky Wednesday videos, be sure to post those in the comments. And if they get really high upvotes, or maybe I just really like the idea, I'll end up choosing it next week. Anyways, that'll be it for this one. If you liked it, you can leave a like or a comment, or you can subscribe, because I post new Halo videos every day. Anyways, thank you for watching. See you tomorrow. Bye.
enemy is almost won. Enemy captured Bravo. 